be a bit more like a chat show. I'm going to ask <laughs> Steam Brother a few questions. Sit back a bit. And uh, he will just inform us about his trip and what happened, inshallah. So, Brother Jamal, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Tell us, firstly, where you went, uh, why you went there, and how long you went for, inshallah. Okay. <coughs> uh, Assalamu alaikum brothers. Uh, I went to Egypt, uh, Alexandria, the city of Alexandria, which is the second capital uh, of uh, Egypt. And uh, I was there to study the Arabic language. Uh, it's a part of my degree, so I was, uh, in your third year you have your year abroad. Uh, where you study, uh, I mean, whatever language you're studying, you go abroad to study. You go abroad to that, a, a country that speaks that language to practice that language. Uh, so obviously, I'm studying Arabic as a part of my degree, and uh, I studied. Uh, I went to Egypt to study the Arabic language at the University of Alexandria. And how long were you there for? Uh, I was there for six months in total. And what course are you doing? I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing a degree at Westminster. I'm doing politics and Arabic. So, okay, so how did you find learning Arabic in Egypt? Because obviously Egypt has got a famous dialect, mm. uh, which is probably the most popular dialect in the Arab world. Mm. Uh, and it's difficult to understand them. Uh, so how do you find learning Arabic in, in such a country? Uh, okay, just a confession. I'm Arab of origin. Uh, I'm from Morocco. Uh, and I don't know if, if you guys are aware of the Arabic dialects, different dialects in the Arab world. The Moroccan dialect is pretty much not Arabic, yeah? as I'm sure my dad can probably explain. Yeah? And, uh, but people in Morocco, they can understand or they can speak the, the formal Arabic because they go through the educational system, you get taught the proper Arabic, the, the Fusha Arabic, which is the, the, the correct Arabic. But the spoken language on the street is obviously, each country has their own dialect. Now, me being a Moroccan, I was born and raised in Britain, so whenever I went to Morocco, I never obviously studied in a school or anything like that. I only learned the uh, spoken Arabic, the, the, let's say the street Arabic. So I'm fluent in the street Arabic, but if you put something on in normal Fusha Arabic, I wouldn't understand a single word. As in, it was essentially another language. I remember I used to go to the, when I used to go to the Jum'a Khutbah, uh, in Morocco, the only thing I understand is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and when you make the dua and at the end that's pretty much it. Uh, so it was like a, a brand new language. So it was, it, was, it was very tough, I mean obviously I've been studying it for two years previous to going to Egypt so I had some type of a foundation uh, but the, I mean the experience was it was amazing, it was very very amazing, it was very difficult to understand the Egyptian dialect. Honestly I remember when we were there, people they did ask me where are you from, and I'd say from Morocco. So they're thinking, okay, he understands us. So they'll start speaking to me in their dialect, and I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah, but now I feel embarrassed. You know, he's gonna say, why don't you understand me? So I'll be like, mm, mm. <laughs> nah, they were, they were, like that kind of thing. And uh, it was very tough, very, very, very tough to understand their dialect. Uh, big, big, big challenge. But I mean, primarily, I wasn't there to learn their dialect because their dialect is like a Moroccan dialect. It's just a dialect. In Syria, they have a dialect. They have a version, which is like a, a local version of Arabic. But I was there to learn the actual Fusha Arabic, which is basically the, the classical uh, formal Arabic. So that was my objective. Uh, the question was, uh, how, how do you, f you know when you start to, to learn Arabic in the university compared to obviously Arabic outside? Did you? Now, when you first got there, you didn't know hardly any Arabic, mm. and then you started to learn Arabic. Mm. Did you try and use the Arabic outside? I did. I tell you, it was uh, it was it was it was excellent in terms of there was you could learn. For example, when you're learning a language, uh, obviously specifically Arabic, which is a beautiful language, it's hard to obviously what you've read in a book to implement to start speaking it straight away. It's actually quite tough to do that straight away. Uh, so it was, there was that challenge, and the second challenge was, even when I started speaking to some of these people, they'd find it strange that I'm talking in this language, like, it's like I'm speaking Shakespeare English, you know, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, that kind of language, that's how they view it, isn't it, yeah? Like old, old classical Arabic, yeah, like Quran Arabic. So they would laugh, I mean, there was one experience, I was, uh, it was actually quite a few experiences, but there was one in particular when I was in the restaurant, I went to a restaurant, and I said to the man, uh, I mean, I can't think of a... Uh, like an, an example in the English language of something like Urid, yeah? Something very, very classical, like they would say, they would say, for example, I can't think of the word, a word in English here, but let's say, I just said, I want this, but in a very, very formal way. 
And the waiter just started laughing at me. He's looking at me, he just starts laughing in my face. And I said, why are you laughing? And he goes, no, nah. he goes, don't, don't take it the wrong way or anything. You just haven't heard that yet. No one, <laughs> no one speaks like that, what are you saying, kind of thing. So, I mean, there were these type of challenges. But I say most of the time, when you tell people why you're learning the, the proper Arabic, i.e. to understand the Quran and this type of thing, then they were actually, not just they respected it, but they were actually very supportive. And they would try to speak to you in the, the Fusha Arabic, uh, in the classical Arabic. So that was a, a bit of a challenge uh, in, in regards to learning the language. When, when you went there, did you, did you how, how much Arabic did you actually know? Like I said, I've been studying for two years. Uh, so I did, I did have a, a decent vocabulary. But my grammar was very, very weak, let's say. My grammar was very, very... And obviously your grammar, specifically of Arabic here, is the foundation of the language. Without the grammar, you're not going anywhere. If you want to learn the language in a proper way, yeah? And uh, my grammar was quite weak, and my vocabulary was alright, but I could, I could have a, basic, a very, very basic conversation with you, but I couldn't explain what I'm thinking or anything like that. I could just tell you maybe an event that happened. The man hit him. That, you know, very basic, very, very, very basic Arabic. Uh, maybe I understood a little bit more, I, I, I could understand more than what I could uh, articulate. I, when I used to hear things, I could understand it a little bit more after two years of studying, but not nothing to, nothing, actually quite, yeah. quite a low level to be honest with you. Yeah, similar, similar to when I went to, uh, to Syria. Mm. So, what, the, the class you went to, what, who were the students there? And, you know, were there university students there? You just come into their class, or how was it when you went to them? Uh, no, it was uh, so. In the, we were studying in the University of Alexandria, but in the university, there's a separate center. It's called the Tafel Center, uh, teaching Arabic language for foreign uh, foreign learners or something like this. Yeah, uh, and so it's all full of foreigners, basically non-Egyptian. So you had people from Britain. So you had Soas University, Westminster University, you had Manchester University, you had American universities. You had, uh, so we had quite a few different American universities. We had uh, universities from Sweden, from Germany. We had, we had basically just a whole mix of European and American universities in this center. Uh, so it's a spe specific uh, center, let's say. Yeah. It's probably the, the biggest and the best in, uh, in Alexandria, definitely, for foreign students learning the language. Uh, so we just went there, for example, first day, because it's attached to our university. Uh, so our university sends there directly. And uh, we start, obviously, we go there and I give you some exams just to see what level you're going to be at. And you get put in different classes and then you start basically uh, following a particular syllabus or curriculum. So, with all these foreign students, most of them probably speak English. Mm. Isn't there, from my experience, there's just the tendency just to learn Arabic in a class and then speak English outside and you don't really learn anything? Didn't you have that tendency when you... No, because the brothers I was with, I mean, you saw one or two of them on the pictures. They were like excellent brothers here who were very, 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 very serious. So you're going to find this funny. We obviously knew it was going to be a problem that we all speak English. We know each other already. We're very comfortable with each other. We're going to speak in English. So we, initially, we wrote a contract <laughs> that we're not going to speak English. And if you speak English, you get a punch. <laughs> <laughs> so we were doing that. And obviously, you keep on slipping up. But there was no room for error, basically. We don't care if you slip up or not. If you did it deliberately or accidentally, you're going to get a punch, yeah? So we started, like, everyone's punching each other, yeah? To the extent it started getting a bit like, he hits you hard, you want to hit him hard, and you're like, all right, you know what, let's forget this one, yeah? Let's do something else, because we don't want to fight. So we were very serious. So then we decided that uh, what we will do instead of doing that is if you speak Arabic three times in a day, regardless of if it was a mistake or not a mistake, you fast. English, you mean? Uh, sorry, English, yeah, yeah. you fast for a day. So then we were doing that, and obviously we got to a stage where, you know, it's hot. No one wants to be fasting in the, in the blazing heat, yeah, especially when you're waking up early. It's quite, it was quite tough, so we were making sure that we don't, don't want to fast. But obviously after fasting a few days, you're thinking, okay, uh, this is very, very, very tough. So you're quite disciplined, yeah, you don't want to speak English, but at the same time you start lapsing. Sometimes it's just a small error, like for example, I'd say things like, okay. Yeah. yeah, and it's not, I, I won't speak English the whole day, but I'll say okay, mm. oh, okay, like that kind of thing, or yeah, there's something small yeah. like that, and because of that you got to, so we decided, okay, let's renew the contract, let's do another <laughs> one, and this time, we said, we'll put down 50 jene, mm. yeah, 50 jene, for there, let's say, if you're living like, which is the Egyptian currency, yeah, yeah. It's the Egyptian currency, 50 jene is like equivalent to about 7 quid, now, 6, six, six quid, 7 quid, something like that, now, 6, 7 quid, Last you, you basically can eat quite good for six, seven quid, and you're traveling on your way to university, and you can sit in a cafe, i.e., it's quite a lot of money. Now, we set the same rule. If you speak Arab English on three different occasions, even if it's just okay, that counts as one, two, and three. So then we decided, so we said, you speak three times, you basically put the money down. 
So, and we had a, a pot, it was on top of my, the flat me and that brother that you saw in the picture was sharing, uh, and some of the other brothers were participating in it. And basically,